Hey, it's D. It's a brand new episode coming right for you, right on the FTO Network. Enjoy. Welcome to episode seven of Table Cheese. I'm your host for today, Anton Six with three X's of the Cheesy Controller Podcast. Joining me as always, I have the man with the plan, FTO Nerd Talk, aka D. How's it going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, love it. Uh, I don't. I, don't, I hope you don't think I'm making funny. Whatever, like I laugh. You do when you do the intro, or like you know, you see your intro part. It just that shit gets to me. I love it. I think it's awesome. Well, the what's <laughs> you, up, everybody. Whenever I host a podcast, I do the what's up, everybody, and that's kind of like an old IGN game scoop and like podcast beyond. I know. I think. I've heard the origin like Damon Hatfield, who does Game Scoop. Um, I heard he was the originator of it, but Greg Miller's been using it for years. And mm-hmm. so, with just the podcast that I grew up listening to, like to intro it, get the energy high. What's up, everybody? And just <laughs> get into it's, it. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of like when you, when you see uh, the majority of black content creators, they always say, like, it's your boy. It's always like, it's, it's your boy, XYZ. It's your boy, ABC. Yeah. No, I feel yeah. I, I get that completely. Well, yeah, you know, but it's like, your boy as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you know, it works. It works. I did it for a good while. You guys look back into like the FTO logs and videos. You'll hear like it's, it's your boy D it's of your FTO. Boy, hey. I mean, <laughs> I'd watch a video that that was the intro. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. We got we got some cool stuff to talk about today, man. I'm really I'm really excited like to break some of this stuff down. Um, just just a heads up to everybody though, I am. I am exhausted. I uh, had an early volleyball game. Uh, my two youngest didn't didn't go to sleep. I took a nap, so I stayed up with them last night. It, it's been a it's been a rough couple of days. So, like I'm in good spirits, just really tired. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got the energy. I got up early today, went grocery shopping, got some bagels, like got the day rolling. So, and I'm excited we'll to talk about kick. video games. I got to do grocery shopping after this. So, like, that's, that's the major kick to all this. I got my day's not over yet. I still got more to do. Yeah. But you're right. We're, we're talking about some video games. A lot of stuff to happen. Uh, I know I want to talk about the Splinter Cell. We just heard some respawn news. I set up. I got a controller coming uh, for, like, the Stadia. Snap. And I may get I may get the, the, the Steam set up on my computer, too. So. Okay. That's actually really exciting. I right? mean... Because I got back into Final Fantasy fourteen last night. Like, I was listening to um, one of the songs from the game, and I was like, oh, well, I'll re-up my sub. I'll get in to go play the dungeon that has the song. And then some of my friends were saying, well, Oni Noir X and Shadow Kami, two of my friends that I play with on a regular basis, both of them... uh had done the newest part of the Endwalker raid that since it dropped, I haven't had game time. And the soundtrack to that is ridiculously good. I was singing along by the end of the night. Damn. Yeah. It started off. So it's four parts to the raid. The first part just had the instrumental. The second and third part had the full song. And then the fourth part had its own song that was more related to the boss that we were fighting. But that second and third part, And we wiped on the third part. We got like to 20% and a Reaper had used their limit break. And so, but it wasn't enough to kill the boss. And then we needed a healer limit break, but the Reaper had already used it. So we wiped, but you know, got to, I spent solid couple hours listening to that song, Raiden, doing end game content. Yeah, man. 14. It's just really good. I took a break i was like it's a bunch of stuff coming out but you know i got a month of game time and in that month you know i got the main story to do finish that part of the raid uh hopefully within the next month we get the next part of the alliance raid which will be really fun but so and i mean if you get 14 on your mac we could definitely run it uh you can either do mouse and keyboard or you could do controller i've played the entirety of my time of Final Fantasy XIV entirely on controller. I did plug up a keyboard to text chat, but you'll be on a Mac, so you'll have a keyboard to talk in party chat and stuff. 
I, I want to see what happens. Like, uh, I wanted to probably fight my 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 middle child on the computer though, because I know <laughs> if he sees me on it, he's gonna just plop himself right on my lap and just take over. And then he's he's a <clears throat> that kid loves games. <laughs> my my oldest loves anime. My um my youngest loves. She gets like different loves and everything, but the middle child he loves the games, man. But uh, I'm seeing right now that Xbox does the is there no Final Fantasy 14 on Xbox? No, there isn't. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 has been PC and PS3. It started like when Realm oh. Reborn came out. It was PS3 and PC, and then it be it went to uh PS4 and PC, and then PS5 and PC when. It took a little while after the PS5 was out, but now the version we're playing is like the native PS5 version. But I started off, because I was playing on PS4 Pro, and I just played the PS4 version on my PS5 when I got a PS5 for a while. But then, I think it was April, like uh, the PS5 came out in November 2020, and then April 2021... uh, the PS5 beta started, and I started playing from day one of the beta, and then it came out probably like June or something like that, and just kept playing. Hmm. All right. Well, you like you're good, you man. Like you really are always playing games. I. I mean, you know, <sighs> when I that's one of my things on my daily routine, just try and hop in and play a little bit of something here or there, mess around, you know get something installed or downloaded, like watch some YouTube videos on some games, you know, just kind of feel that. But have it as part of my, yeah. Just so I can be like informed, like earlier you were talking about Splinter Cell and Splinter Cell. We knew we were getting a remake of the first game as like the next Splinter Cell project because Ubisoft has been parading Tom, uh, Sam Fisher. I almost called him Tom Clancy. That's a different guy. <laughs> That's a whole, uh, the whole different dude. <laughs> but it's uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, right? It's one of the trillion Ubisoft shooters with the Tom Clancy name on it. Yeah. Right. So yeah, uh, like Rainbow, like Rainbow Six, and yeah. uh, the Division. Uh, yes. God, yeah. It's. Yeah. Rainbow Six Siege, like the amount of when you go to the T's in like I know on my PlayStation I have like the Division One and Two. I have uh Ghost Recon, I think Wildlands. And so but I, I when I want to play the division I'm trying to go to like either D or T H and it's always like, Oh no, it's actually Tom Clancy's the division. Oh yeah, like like it has to be like typed in that way. It's not been, like just like the division. It's not just Rainbow Six. Right. It's not just uh, in in War Online. It's not just like you know Ghost <laughs> Recon. Like it has to be Tom Clancy. Otherwise, like you will have it wrong. You're absolutely correct about that. Right. So I'd look it up. Tom Clancy's like, Splinter Cell. Division. And the division they actually during their Ubisoft forward uh, time has lost a lot of meaning. Uh, it was either last week or two weird. weeks. Weird. I remember that game was like was one of the most hyped games of the year, man. That's that's crazy. The gameplay didn't didn't, didn't land. That's that's what it was. What the division? Did not hold up too. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the division one and two actually. Um, yeah. I'm excited. They're doing a free to play the division mm-hmm. Heartlands that's coming 2023, and I'm actually excited to play that. Because the Division, it has that, like, squad-based... It's something, when I got into the Division, it was, like, an open-world co-op kind of, like... The open-world live service game is not something that I realized I wanted in the way that it is in the Division, but for me, it kind of really hits whenever I play the Division. Like, you got to communicate when you're playing the division. Like, you got to, like, talk to your team. You have to talk to you. You got to talk back to your team. Otherwise, it will not It will not work. Well, no. I did a lot of stuff solo, actually. It was just, oh. like, the open world. Because it was uh, New York in the first game and D.C. in the second game. And just going around the city and there being roaming groups of enemies. And, you know, 
you fight all of them they drop a chest it was very destiny like in that way but i mean mm-hmm. they're they're very unabashedly like taking a lot from destiny but to for it not to be space wizards and for it to be like grounded like third person you know every once in a while you want that gritty cover base shooter and yeah that's what the division is for me and it has the live service and it has the open world and has pve areas and all that kind of stuff so and with the load times on ps5 because the most recent time i played it i played it on ps5 one of the like major downsides of it on last gen consoles were the load times like fast traveling a lot of times it'd be faster for you to walk across the city to where you needed to go rather than fast travel because fast travel you'd have to like load the entire part of the map so and, and you just be sitting with that problem oh yeah the ssds in the ps5 because i was playing the ps4 version not even optimized for it and just the load times like there are certain games like when i'm streaming a ps4 game I'll typically have it on one of, like, because there's an SSD that's, like, on the motherboard of the PS5, and then you can add another SSD, and so I added a 2 terabyte, and I haven't used my external drive, but every once in a while, if there's a game I want to play that's a PS4 game that'll take up a lot of space, I'll do it on a external hard drive, but, like, a while ago, I was streaming Sekiro, and every time you die, the load times would be noticeably quicker on ps5 Mm. so like i was fighting this boss that i was stuck on and it'd be like fight him die load climb up the roof skip the cutscene, keep fighting him and so just that load part it was almost twice as long on when running off the external hard drive versus running off the ssd so yeah with games that had load times like any game you can think of that has had significant load times has been reduced like gta 5 was notorious for you open the game and you could walk away and go and do something and come back and you still wouldn't have fully loaded on last gen consoles and now it's just like super snappier in there Speaking of GTA, like since like we're we're on a subject of things we're gonna be talking about today, uh, there was a leak of yeah. GTA recently, and one you know, of the they're... biggest video game leaks of all time. Uh, they're actually the FBI. Where we're at, like every day, there's more and more news about this thing because I remember seeing it drop and seeing like one clip, and I like. Part of me was kind of like halfway like, is this real? Is this not? Because I saw like GTA was trending and I saw like a mission where you like rob a Waffle House and it seems to confirm some of the things we knew about it from leakers before that it was going to be in Vice City and have a male and female protagonist and that the uh, female protagonist would be Latinx and like a lot of these things that we've known through reporting have been just straight up confirmed. And the fact that Rockstar has come out and they released a statement like, yeah, it's all real. Uh, Please don't share it. Uh, We are taking down anything and everything. Uh, Nothing personal, but like, they're like, these are stolen assets from a game in development. And people are already starting to form judgments on, because it was like 90 videos that came out. Like I only saw Mm -hmm. one or two. But it was, it was 90 minutes long for all of it. Yeah. I think it was like, was it 50 videos dropped totaling 90 minutes or was it 90 videos that to- dropped totaling 50 minutes? I know I'm it was. Still reading, I'm still reading an article from IGN trying to, trying to make heads or tell out of it. Yeah. But so it's interesting that this leak has been so big and that, uh, Rockstar and Uber actually because uh, the hacker responsible for leaking this information actually hacked Uber as well and so the FBI got the guy apparently and he was trying to do like a ransom for the source code to GTA 5 like all this GTA 6 stuff was one thing but there was a ransom for for the source code for GTA 5 and apparently 
there are conflicting reports of if it's out there, if it's not. Uh, that's not really... I'm not going to go looking for it. <laughs> but uh, that's a huge thing. Like, if your game source code gets out there. Because GTA Online has so many players. Like, all they have to do is, like, reverse engineer something to, like, do a ransomware attack on everybody online at one time in GTA. Or if you log in or anything, they can just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot that they can do with that code if it is out there. All right. I got the information. Close to 100 different videos of the game were shared online anonymously. True on robberies, gunplay, fully voiced conversation, and more. Uh, but it is like total of over, over 90 minutes of video. So, yeah, you're right. It's over 100 different videos that were posted. Okay. And, yeah, so, I mean, that's just like a huge... And there have been a lot of conversations popping up around it. And I don't... I kind of want to, like, clear up some of the stuff for people who've seen the news or seen some of the clips and think that GTA 6 is actually going to look like that. Uh, a lot of developers have actually been sharing, like, the reason they don't show games earlier on in production is because graphics are usually some of the last things to get put into a game. And a lot of people think, oh, yeah, graphics are the first thing that's done because, like, they have an art team and they like, no, like graphics, like infamously Borderlands, the original Borderlands didn't have the cell shaded art style that it's super iconic for until like the last month before it came out. It was just kind of like a last minute like decision they made and they're like, hey, that actually looks really good. So they added it in and it was a huge success. And I mean, like Borderlands is like, a huge franchise now and you can instantly like with cosplay and like it's just a huge IP and like they didn't make the des design decision that they are now known for until super late into development so people you think like, like that <clears throat> that detail that everyone seems like to, to talk about and love so much when it comes to video games like that that's always the last part yeah to go over all of this yeah and like other games destiny the last of us like i you could look at older e3 demos of some of those games and see the actual like improvement with the final game that we got like the hud was almost completely different in both destiny and the last of us for a really long time but now the huds that they have in the finished product if you go back and watch that video it's like a completely different thing and they showed that when they were ready to show the game this is just g like rockstar was not ready to show gta and a lot of times those after the fact show in development footage of things and they'll be in like these development environments like you are not when you're building a game you're not going through and everything looks great all the time and like there were a lot of things even in the diner thing where like the npc seemed like placeholder mm -hmm. and they'll probably have more npc variety and like even with <clears throat> it was just kind of to showcase the mechanics of the game and like mission structure and stuff like that so you don't ne you don't need that rendered in 4k with ray tracing and all of that when you're like the game's in development, no one publicly has seen the game. And so just for a lot of the people who came across some of this like footage of the game and think that for whatever reason, you think that graphics are one of the first things to be done in the game. I guarantee you it is one of the last things to be done. Like voice acting is usually first, like level design, like more core elements like that. And then, when it's in a better place. Like, a lot of times games get delayed just for them to be able to polish the game and make the game look and run better. So. When it comes to all you comment commenting out there talking about how crap this looks, how, like, it doesn't look like GTA, I think, like, you know, it just looks bad. Like, you know, maybe you don't know as much you think, you know. And, like, time right. is going to have to go. Unless you're a game I'm developer, but, like, just... And that was actually something I saw going around on Instagram was like game developers getting like big, de both like 
big and small developers and publishers getting mad that people are judging this in development footage that was leaked. It wasn't like Rockstar uploaded this to their YouTube and it's like, hey, big GTA 6 blowout going on. No, this is like somebody clicked a link somewhere wrong along the line and like, because all of these are like assets that were like mined from their Slack. So somebody who had access to the Slack server probably clicked a phishing email and poof, next thing you know. We got over 90 minutes of your game just out there mm. on Twitter. Insane. It really is insane. <clears throat> like, uh, it, it does make me think about, like, you know, the Sony breach. It thinks, thinks about, like, uh, all the other companies that have been breaching the past decade. And yeah, this, CD uh, Projekt Red was had. Yeah. Uh, the pl- I was a PlayStation 3 player during the PlayStation outage. I remember, like, being in high school... And, like, every day coming home and hoping the PSN was back up. And, I mean, every year lately at Christmas, uh, they'll DDoS, like, just all, like, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, and Nintendo servers. They'll just hit them with DDoS attacks and so nobody can play their games online on Christmas. It's just... I. It just it just makes you realize that, that that no company is safe from hacks. Like no company, like right. you're, you're not safe. Companies aren't safe. I think like Gmail was hacked like a while ago. Like like no one is safe when it comes to anything. Facebook was hacked not too long ago. Yeah, just it's just way it is now, man. It's like uh, just watch what you put on the internet. Yeah, what was it, Adam Levine? <laughs> right, he was a recent one to get to get something hacked. Yeah. That's how like his affair got put out there. I think uh, the dude like who had an affair with Neil Long, like uh, that wasn't really leaked. That was more exposed. But yeah, like things getting leaked, man. Things getting leaked. Yeah. Well, what we're talking about, like the publisher developer community relationship kind of uh, thing. Respawn recently put out this statement. Uh, they put it out two days ago. It says recently we have increased. We have seen increased harassment towards team members of our development team. We welcome community input. However, the line between constructive feedback and the harassment of our dev team cannot be crossed. We want to remind our players that we have a zero tolerance policy for threats and the harassment of our de- developers. We will take a pro- we will take appropriate action to ensure the health and safety of our team. We love hearing feedback and will continue to work alongside our community to foster a respectful and collaborative environment and uphold the competitive integrity of our game. So okay. you got, you got to tell me about this. I, I, we, we, I saw this in passing looking for news to talk about. And like, you know, I think kind of funny and kind of talked about this also, but like, what, what is this, this thing with, with, with the, the players being apparently dicks to, the Apex Legends respawn crew? What's going on with that? Yeah, so that just... The Apex Legends, because it's one of the biggest games around, it's a huge free-to-play kind of thing. Uh, People just, like... I'll say even in the party, like, I hate Apex. Like, they need to get their act together. A lot of... Because, like, I'm playing the game and I can see, like, the a lot of the glaring problems with the game as an active player. Um... But I'm that's not something I'm not the type of person to go on Twitter and like say, fuck you, fix your game, or I'm gonna kill your entire family. Like that is stuff like people as always They go are, that hard? Yes. Especially towards like Bungie actually like a Bungie employee got doxxed and Bungie had to go and like sue and like do all this stuff because of, like, people complaining about hackers in Destiny led to, like, actual death threats and, like, addresses of employees getting out there. Like, it gets really bad. And, like, I don't understand the people on the Internet who do that kind of thing. Like, there are way better ways to spend your time. And, if like, there are a million other games out there. Like, go play something else. And I know, like, 
Respawn's not exactly small, but they're, like, not the size of Epic. Like, and even Epic has dealt with issues like this. So, like, for Epic to, like, as massive as they are to have problems like that, the fact that someone like Respawn or Bungie, the the amount that these developers have to go through... It's like, if you are the combat designer, you are already super busy. The last thing you mm-hmm. need is someone in your mentions, like, threatening you and saying they're going to murder you and just... The type I'm, I'm of saying stuff... it, it goes another way also. Like, uh, there, there's people saying, like, like, but they have to be mean. How else are they going to get their porn across is what they're saying to them. And, yeah. like, they talk about how uh, everyone that doesn't understand devs have lives. Like, uh... Like, all, all this, in their point of view, is about, like, the sake of the game. Like, the game is not performing to the standard that they want it to. So, like, they feel like they have to be mean to make these developers do what they want them to do. And uh, no, it, you... it just it just kept on going and took the turn that you're talking about right now. It went to, like, the point of where it is now. I just, <clears throat> I didn't think gamers still did shit like that. Yeah, and it always oh, gotten way worse in recent years, like. That's it, wild, man. It, it's despicable. Like, that's something, like, there have been times where we've covered stories like this on Cheesy Controller, and I've had to be like, look, if you are the type of person who is doing something like this and you are hearing my voice, stop. There are better ways to get your point across with being respectful. There, like Respawn said, there's a difference between constructive criticism and, like, just, like, being a terrible person. Like, Dude. if you're the type of person doing something like this, stop. Go play something else. I mean, that that's that's the best course of action, like, right there. Right. Instead of wasting your time, like, threatening people and, like, honestly making them less receptive to actual feedback from the community that's going to positively impact the game. Like, you, you're hustling backwards, you know? That's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Like, you're uh, putting your energy and your effort out there to, like, be mean and to, like, attack people. You put that energy never, into something positive or creative or, like, you know? I can't think of a time that, that insulting or harassing someone ever really got you what you wanted. I can't I can't think of a moment that, that that has been like a thing that someone has done and like they got the outcome that they wanted to get. I can't I can't think of any moment that that actually has happened. Like I'm not saying like you right you know like solving your solve, solving your problems by being like blunt and stern doesn't like get, get you the solution that you want to get like but uh full on threatening to like to take someone's life and hurt their family like I don't I've never seen that work. The, the, if anything, they, right. that always backfires in your face. That's not like it's a deeper root problem with the person themselves. And like, you know, as you said earlier, they probably shouldn't be playing the game. Right. Like, if you really have fundamental problems on that level, which I completely get, like Apex, yeah. they need to get their servers together, their gameplay balance. Like, you're all constantly getting third partied by Octane. Like, there are a lot of problems with the game. But the way I'm responding to that as somebody who plays Apex is by playing other games. I'm playing Final <laughs> Fantasy 14. I'm playing Splatoon. Like, you can get to the point. There are so many, like, you could go play Destiny. That's free to play. You can go play Fortnite. That's free to play. There are just, there are other games that aren't having the same problems. And if the problems are that serious to you, take a hike, honestly. <laughs> touch grass go outside get some fucking vitamin d from the sun and... I've, I've heard that one recent that the touch grass I, yes. <laughs> I like that yeah touch some grass please <laughs> i'm right there with you man i really am like a hundred percent all right i mean we can go on to a positive story i don't want to <laughs> dwell that might, good, that might be a good idea <laughs> so for anybody watching the video version, I'm wearing my Yorha t-shirt, one of my favorite gaming-related t-shirts. And it's very appropriate because this morning, or probably in the middle of the night last night, because all the news came from Japan and time zones. Um, but 
what's happening is Nier Automata is getting uh, anime. So one of my oh. favorite games of all time, like, we got 50 seconds of footage and just every scene of this footage is selling me a hundred percent. They accurately recreated a lot of the cut scenes from the game and apparently, so it's version 1.1 a. And for anybody who knows Yoko Taro, the director of near Automata, the game, there's going to be story changes. Like, Nier is a really deeply philosoph like it deals with a lot of really heavy stuff and like a lot of like do you really have agency like philosophical things are, like are dealt with in the Nier series and Nier Automata kind of was the first big one to really break out and since okay. then uh Yoko Taro has kind of gotten on the map and has the, he put out a uh, Nier replicant but uh, the remake was, let's see, it's a super long title, but I got to read the entire thing. Near Replicant version 1.22474871391 ellipses. So three dots. That's the entire name of the game because there were enhancements over the original game. So instead of calling it like Near Replicant Remastered, it's version 1.4. ellipses. Now, I, I remember talking about this. Uh, I, you know, as you know, I, I post news articles every so often. <clears throat> and I stumbled upon this one here. When you talked about the name, uh, I didn't know, did not know that that's how you say the game's name or like, the anime's name. But um, I remember like talking about this and hearing like this is going to be an anime soon. And uh, I did hear a lot of fans like in my comments talking about, yeah, I, I just hope it's good because that that story is really dense. Like it's really hard to get all that story from a video game into an anime because you got to talk about a lot of stuff. And like you just you yeah. just brought that up inside of this like so well i'm a huge is... near fan just on my desk i have a music box that plays one of the songs from the game i have okay. like six different books like two art books uh i got there are two like novels that go with the game well three technically but like two that are part of a series and another one so like near is just a really rich world and it's part of so near is a spinoff from Drakengard. and like near has twenty six endings, one for each letter of the alphabet. Even though A through E are only the super important ones, and some of them like are super complex. Like you have to do like this super secret side mission, and it's really cool. Uh, I don't know if Nier has a Mac version, but it you can probably play it on Stadia or something. That's actually one of the games okay. I have on my Steam Deck, and the Switch version is coming out soon. So they did Nier Automata, which was on PS4 and PC. The PC version kind of sucked. Then they did the, uh, oof, what's it called, Become as Gods edition on Xbox and updated the PC version. And then they did the, uh, is it the end of Yorha? No, Game of the Yorha edition uh, for PS4, which included all the post-release content. And then now they're doing the end of Yorha edition on Switch. So they'll finally be on like all the major platforms. And I think the fact that it's not a cloud version and, and like the game seems pretty scalable I'm actually, that's one of the Switch ports this year I'm most anticipating. Like, I really want a copy of that. The, I saw that the, the, the trailer you sent me, It um the, the resolution is nice. It does, like, kind of, it looks familiar animation-wise. I can't put my finger on, like, where I've seen this animation from. But it looks it looks good. It looks familiar. Like, I, I'm in for it. I want to see, like, how this plays out. It looks like it has, like, a futuristic feel. And along with all the fancy stuff that are coming out right now, content-wise, I can use some more futuristic well, vibes with swords. So 
are you looking at the trailer through Discord or how are you looking? Because I can send mm-hmm, you a side by side that somebody did an edit where it's a side by side of scenes in the game and scenes in the anime. Damn. Yeah. So. And I mean, it's a great game. Like, they may not have to. There's a lot of stuff that I could see them glossing over, but they could tell a really compelling story through an anime with this. So you're saying, like, like for a person who's not too familiar with this, like, I only know it in passing and cosplaying, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's how I really like That's how I'm really familiar with this. I <laughs> hey, man, I like cosplay. <laughs> hey. like, and I mean, 2B been... took the cosplay world by storm. Like, near, yeah. near like, a lot of people know about it because of that, but uh, I remember Jalen was actually the one that told all of us on the Cheesy Controller podcast about it because they had it on sale for like 20 bucks at GameStop, so we all went and got physical copies and got into it, and since then, like, I have a near poster, I have a lot of... It's one of my favorite games of the last generation, period, like... I platinum did on PS4. The anime, oh yeah, totally excited for the anime. Wearing this mm. shirt, you know, gonna hoping somebody like that's always the interesting thing when I wear gaming shirts on the day that gaming news stuff happens. Like Pokemon <laughs> Day, I'll always wear a Pokemon shirt, and like Mario Day, I'll wear a Mario shirt, and so I did notice that uh, your generation. Like you guys got hardcore into doing that, like going going to movies while like wearing the shirt when a movie comes out, like yep. uh, going to a convention, like wearing like like sporting the shirt, like that's all, of your favorite game, like going like that, that, I realized that was like a big thing. I have a uh, part of Tanjiro kimono, and when I went to see the Demon Slayer movie on my birthday a couple years back, I wore my Tanjiro kimono to the theater. Nice, so very nice. <laughs> that's cool. I wish you could have seen that thing in theater. I would have bawled my eyes out. I'm sure. Ah. Uh, I was super tired, so, like, I, the thing was, like, that day, I think I was doing, like, high-end trials, and, like, I had my family come over, and so, like, that day was super busy, and the day before, I had worked, like, a double, but then I had to, like, get up on my birthday and be doing stuff, and so... One of the things, I definitely fell asleep for, like, small segments of that movie because I was so tired. But at the end of the day, it still was a great movie. And then when it came to Crunchyroll later on, I rewatched it, like, fully awake and aware. But, like... I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it, it was some parts of that movie that, that could have not been in it. So, you know, I, I can get to sleep. I really like it, especially if you're tired. I can understand it. But, like, the last, right. the last and- 30 minutes... And then the, like, uh, not the Hashira, the Kizuki, the, like, demon mm-hmm. that they were fighting at the beginning of the movie, that his hand was telling people to go to sleep, and, like, the whole thing, just, I was like, I'm like, I am go? being hypnotized by the demon in this movie right now. <laughs> He's telling me to go to sleep. I'm just listening to him, guys. <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> right. If, if we could deviate just for one second, like uh, we were talking about stuff and then I saw something that caught my eye. Uh, that thing I saw was Diablo 4. Mm. And I did not know that Diablo 4 was uh, coming out oh. soon. Yeah. Had no idea. Had no had no clue. I've been playing Diablo since uh, since way, way back in high school. Uh, way like back in late 90s, man. Like uh, I've been playing me some Diablo and... Uh, I'm watching. I've been watching like throughout most of this talk. I've been watching deep, uh, Diablo Four gameplay, and holy hell, this looks like wow! Like uh, if you like Diablo Three, which I did, yeah. I know I know it was a mixed bag with a lot of people. I love well, Diablo. 3. By the time it, it was good. all said and done, it kind of got uh, the reception on it turned around because when it came to consoles, it didn't have the real money auction house. And it had, like, really good controller support. And so, I remember on PS4, I played, like, the Ultimate Evil Edition. I played a shit ton of hours of Diablo 3 on PS4. Because it was, like, the game when people 
people are like, oh, yeah, Destiny's coming out. And if you want to, like, get into a loot game in the meantime, check this out. Like, it's really fun. There's a lot of content. It's super replayable. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And I put a lot of time into Diablo 3, early PS4 generation. And it was one I would go back to. Like, if somebody got the game, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll hop on Diablo. We can run some of this campaign. Like the, uh, I I can't find out how to do it online on the Switch. I don't think there is one online for the Switch. But uh, I I I played Diablo three like during all during all the uh, the first year of uh, COVID, I was on Diablo three like a maniac, just going crazy on it. That was my that was my go to game. So like uh, having that nostalgia from the first and the second one, and seeing that there's a fourth one coming out, uh, yeah. Like if you guys when this comes out, if it comes on the Switch, I'm getting it. Like, so I'm not I, sure I be... if it's coming to the Switch. I know it's coming to PC and PS5 and Xbox Series X. So, so let me give it a look. Let me give it a look. Because I know it was part of Xbox's E3 this year. They showed uh, they showed some Overwatch shows Lewis and says, Diablo pocket, PocketLint.com. There's no word yet on the Nintendo Switch version. It might come a lot later on, but who knows? Because Activision Blizzard is about to get bought by Microsoft, so it's about to be. Mm. It's mostly because of the online gaming world, though. That's why. Well, I mean, Nintendo that... has online. Like, people play Apex and Overwatch and all these different things on Switch. Mm. And I have Diablo 3 on Switch. I haven't really played it, so, like, I mean. If that's something you want to get into, like I mean, we gotta link up in the game. Some I know that's that's your language, dude. That's like that. That is your language. I gotta have you speaking that thing sometime soon. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm but giving I, you I, options. I'm like, I know so many. You give me so many options. I got a controller coming. I got a controller coming. So like, I, what controller and, did you end up getting? I know you were talking about maybe getting a DualShock Four, maybe DualSense. What did you end up getting? I got some off-brand. <laughs> I think it's got like a Proton something. It looks like a it looks like a PlayStation controller. It has like the Dual Shock attached to it. It has Bluetooth attached to it. It looks like it looks like a PS4 controller. It just it does. And uh, hopefully it works the way I want it to. Had good ratings attached to it. Hopefully they were bot ratings. So we'll we'll see what happens. If it doesn't work out, it was only twenty bucks. So oh, I, okay. I don't I wouldn't feel too bad. So you know I didn't want to spend too much. I just I want I want to like just get my hands on it. I'm pretty sure, like, no matter what happens, it'll work for a couple of hours, and like, I'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, I'll, I'll end up getting something a little bit more expensive, and like going that route. I, I give you my word on that. Like, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the, I'll pay the extra bucks. I'll put it out there, and we can play some games together. Because again, that's your language. I want to speak it, and uh, and just play some games, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got Destiny Two. I haven't really been on Destiny lately, but I'll hop on Destiny 2. We do Diablo. I'm not sure if I have it on PC, but if I don't, I could make that happen. I know I have it on Switch. I have it on PlayStation. The, the Stadia gives you a few games. I saw Hitman attached to it. I saw Saints Row also. Well, uh, have you looked at the reviews on Saints Row? Not the best. <laughs> not the best. Yeah, they are. So, they dropped the ball with this new Saints Row game. They dropped. Yeah. They really dropped the ball. I really don't recommend uh, because I know you'd have to buy Saints Row on Stadia, or maybe it's mm. part of like the Stadia Pro thing. But yeah, it was like you get, you get to claim all those games, the ones that I mentioned. Yeah, so I don't recommend even <laughs> going out of your way for that. Like they're. Noted. If you're gonna, cause what's it, uh, fifteen dollars for a Stadia Pro or something like that? Ten bucks. Oh, well, still maybe not. Like there are better ways to spend ten bucks. <laughs> I said not even ten dollars for this game. Just don't do it. Just yeah. Don't put your money into it. <laughs> right. Don't support bad behavior. Yeah, I mean, that's a, hey, you are speaking my language there. Like, having three kids, that is, wow, yeah, you do not, because it's going to keep on happening. I give you my word, it's going to keep on happening. Yep. <laughs> so, 
hold them accountable. Like maybe if they stick with it and improve the game, maybe later on you buy the game. Cause mm-hmm. that's like what cyberpunk, like they sold it on a bunch of false promises. It wasn't available for like six months on the PlayStation store. Like you could like PlayStation wasn't even going to let you buy it. And then now that it's come back and had all these updates and a lot of the hype from the anime, they're hitting like a million concurrent. A players million. For a million. Every day. Nuts. For a, a game like, they were, that's like two years old. This is this is one of the stories that's gonna be on my blurred news. Like I, I haven't saved on my phone, I just haven't like edited it yet. They went from eighty six thousand players a day to over a million a day now. Like that's insane, man. That's insane. And I mean, they deserve it. They did a lot of work. Like they came out and they kind of like didn't they rush. Uh, old, yeah, the, they the released this game. I mean, didn't they rush that? Yeah, they totally rushed it. Like, and it probably shouldn't have come out on last gen consoles. But even now, they're they f- did what they could with the last gen version, and now they are uh, all in on the next gen. Like the Edge Runners update was the last update last gen got, and now mm-hmm. it's entirely PS4, PC, Xbox One, and Stadia. Uh, one of my friends, Bell. Um, he's out in Oakland. I think he's still out in Oakland. Uh, he played Cyberpunk at launch on Stadia and be and streamed the entire game and actually had wow. a good time because Stadia is running it on a high end PC in a server somewhere. Wow! So for him, it wow. was a good. Like I know a lot of people. They only sent out PC release codes, and so a lot of the reviews are on the PC like platform. And so, yeah, the PC version at launch was decent, like, at least in the 80s. Speaking of, though, speaking of, you know, Cyberpunk, I gotta, I gotta ask, like, I did, I just did, like, a recap for, like, the entire season, because I just finished it. I had to be honest with you, you know, I, I took, like, a, a two-minute break from even talking about it before I recorded it, because I, I needed to digest that entire season. Yeah. I'm not going to give any spoilers. Right, but yeah. uh, but what did you think of the show, man? I mean, I was excited from the jump. I had to tell you, I was like, "D, you got to watch this one. Like, this is one." And so I had to put you on. I was excited from the moment they announced it before the game came out, and like the game came out and was like a garbage fire. But I was like, "But that anime, though, that anime is still coming." <laughs> me and me and Trigger are like this now. I don't yeah, give it like you right. Can't tell Trigger me, is you my can't new tell me best wrong about, friend. You can't, you can't tell me wrong about Trigger now, dude. Like Trigger did this. And like the, the, the cute looking anime company. Like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I don't care. Whatever. This is this is everything they do. I'm in now. Star right. Wars got it. I'm got you. I'm on it. <laughs> right. It that's so been good, the man. thing lately. I I even recommended it to Radic, uh last week uh, before I left the studio because uh, he uh, was further in the series than me. So I was like, but if you are enjoying Cyberpunk Edge Runners, go watch the episode of the Star Wars Visions they did. Go like Kill the Kill is not hard to get access to. I think it's. Yeah. It's like been on Netflix. It's like for a good minute, yeah. Yeah, so go watch Kill the Kill. Uh, if you want to see a lot of the team that, because I think they were with Gynax and then went and formed Trigger on their own, go and watch Gurren Logan. Like you'll that, see, dude. and you'll see like you'll see the lineage between all of these things to get Edge Runners. And I mean, Edge Runners is nowhere near the end for them. Like, go watch Pro Mare. Jeez, like buy that Blu-ray. It's worth the money. So such a good hand. like the characters, man. Yeah, like and like and usually like you know you don't you don't get like story and character and substance all in like in one one show, but like like dude, Edge Runners, man, like you really <laughs> those I really fill for all those characters, like right? all all like the all Maine? those characters, like fuck, dude, like David, <laughs> man. Oh yeah, David and Lucy, whoo, man. Like even Kiwi, like even though like she was a, a, a traitorous, traitorous sob, like you know I still, I like I like Kiwi. And then uh, <laughs> I can never remember her name, the little short girl. Yeah, her full goblin mode. <laughs> like I can appreciate because she was a gremlin and was mm-hmm. just like constantly in goblin mode. Couldn't even never be stop. mad at her for it. Mm-mm. 
Never, not once, not once did she stop being that way. No, you couldn't tell her nothing. Absolutely, she would definitely remind me of my youngest daughter. Yeah, for sure, like full on, like like personality is exactly the same. Like, <laughs> like my kid said something to me once. I left like uh, my wife left some chips out. My kid said to me because uh, she was eating them. She says like, "Well, you shouldn't leave your stuff out. Then I wouldn't eat them if they were out." This kid is like three <laughs> years old when she said this. Like, so yeah, like like that character full on reminded me of my. Yeah, I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Full on remind me of that character, like full on, full on that character. Like, what am I supposed to do? When she says that to me, like, okay, well, I, I guess you're grounded, <laughs> but you don't really care because you're three years old. So, you know, just gotta right. let it go. Gotta, gotta let it go. <laughs> you took too long. Now you're okay. Yeah. Long. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> nice. Good quote. I like it. I Good think quote. Uh, I, maybe <laughs> a show for you to watch with her uh, is being puppy cat on Netflix. Yeah. Like hey, it's on the, it's on the list. I used to watch uh, cartoon hangover. Uh, yep. Bravest one. So I used to watch that. A yeah. good amount, so. What was the other one? Uh, Deep space nine. There was another one that would be on cartoon hangover on YouTube back in the day. Oh, Rebecca, that's her name in the anime. Mm. That's it. And I work with two Rebeccas. Neither of them are anything like this, so. <laughs> that's that's all I really have to talk about for this episode. Did you have anything else to talk about for this episode? Uh, no, I haven't gotten a chance to hop in the Splatfest uh, this weekend yet. Um uh the modern warfare 2 beta i played that last weekend uh got to got all the rewards from the first weekend i'm like level 19 and you have to hit level 30 to get all the rewards for the second weekend so i might spend some time on that later on tonight and tomorrow uh gonna be back into final fantasy 14 like the time has come got me some game time there's content i gotta do so I've been wanting to do this. I'll probably do this at the beginning of the show from here on, but I wanted to ask, uh, what have you been playing and where can people find you uh, on your gaming, what gaming handles? Uh, well, it's Anton the number six with two X's on PSN because PSN doesn't allow three X's. Uh, my Switch friend code you can find in my bio in certain places, but not in other places because like, my friends list got just way too full. Especially, like, when I had it on my Twitter and stuff. And there was, like, a point in time where the Monster Hunter Rise demo came out. And I had frame rate problems because I had too many people on my friends list. So I went through and I purged my friends list on Switch. Like, if you really want to play something with me on Switch, at me, DM me. uh, I'll give you my Switch friend code. But I'm not just going to, like... It's out there on some, like, I think it's on, <laughs> like, in my Instagram bio or something. Like, you could find it if you really wanted it. And then it's Anton. I like how you switched that tone up, though. Like, I like that. Like, you know, I'm not just going to give you my Switch name. Like, that's not going to happen. But go on, please. I mean, it's, like, 12 numbers. And so, like, I could bring it up on my phone and read it. Here. Just for you, D. Just for you. Let me go to my notes. Find my Switch friend code. My friend code on Switch is 39168094 You can add me. It'll be, you'll see Anton Six. Send me a friend request. There it is. If you're listening, got, if you're out here I, I listening. Him, <laughs> for this long in the podcast, I talked him into it. <laughs> I mean, just know you'll go to my profile. You'll see Splatoon. You'll see Monster Hunter. You'll see Smash Bros see pokemon like i don't there's not a lot that i will play with people but like if you're trying to get into splatoon or if you're playing near automata when it comes out on switch later this year or persona anything like that i mean being friends on switch is basically pointless because you can't invite your friends to things you can't uh message your friends you can't it's all like just kind of you can see what they're yeah. playing, when they're playing it, and what they've played in the past. But that's about that's it. That's about it. Yeah. There's I mean, like, like, I use Discord on. for voice chat. Like, you can, if one of your friends is online in Splatoon, you can like join them 
through the in-game lobby, but you can't, like, send them an invite that'll show up on their system. It's, yeah. So, before we go, uh, this is, this first off, this has been a great, a great conversation, just talking about games and just talking about, just talking about, like, just a good about a, like, or just fun stuff. But would you ever take a, take a little, little rendezvous to Night City? Would you ever, like, I just cancel all your plans, just have a little vacation to Night City? IRL? Yeah. Like, if it were a real place? Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess so. Like, it could be fun. I definitely wouldn't want to live there, but, you know, no. like, I love the city. Like, I've enjoyed when I've gone to New York and Chicago and, like, other big cities around the country. Uh, Want to go to Tokyo? Like, I definitely, like, metropolitan areas. Like, I enjoy the energy of cities. Philadelphia? I got to go to Philly someday. I got to go yeah. hang out with, uh, with uh, Fukunami. Gotta go hang out with those guys. They're, they're big gamers, just like you guys are. Yeah, I gotta go to San Francisco. That's on the list. Of, I mean, that's that's a definite, right? That's in Santa Monica. Yeah. Yeah. You like, got it. That's like that's like calling to you. That's like a, a beacon. That's like Anton, come to us. Yeah. So, the the I think top of the list is Tokyo. Like any opportunity I get, I'm I'm on a plane to Japan. Uh, you, you mentioned that to me before. So you don't want to, like that's that's on the that's majorly on the list of a place for you to go. Yeah, top of the list. And I'll, like if I somebody want to buy me a plane ticket, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll be here for it, dude. <laughs> this is uh this has been fun, and um, I'm watching the the, the Cyberpunk twenty twenty seventy seven like unreal engine 5 graphics is, is absolutely gorgeous if you guys aren't playing it you should definitely go play it support well, yeah. these guys i'm definitely like i have it reinstalled on my playstation um i'm thinking of hopping in it's just a lot of stuff that like is speaking to me right now a lot more but it's definitely mm-hmm. at some point like because i remember around even when it was first coming out like i know that kind of rpg like the kind of fallout style like we've talked about that not really being my style before and so but edge runners like their youtube videos out there for a david bill like the sandeskin is a piece of tech you can get in the game like they have lucy builds out there they have main builds so like you could really get into the game and like make some of these characters from the anime and like play through the story so that's main was a badass dude to you you know he went cyber psycho right yeah you stuck around this long. Sorry for that spoiler. Yeah, I mean, oh well. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, I guess we could call it here. Remember, until next time, you can find me around the internet, cheesycontrollerpodcast.com, on Twitter, Anton6 with three X's, on Instagram, Anton the number six, two X's. It's also my PSN handle if you want to add me on there. Send me a message. Tell me to listen to Table Cheese. You know, we could play some whatever. I'm Fortnite, Call of Duty, whatever. I'm down to play pretty much anything I already have. Uh, D, where can people find you? You're easygoing gamer, dude. I like it. Like, I'm just, I'm up for anything. I I like that. That's a good vibe. Uh, Because I am not the same kind of vibe when it comes to video games. But uh, I am D of FTNR Talk. You can find me everywhere you find FTNR Talk. Uh, I don't have any handles on on the gaming world. My my handle was Darth Burn Knight everywhere. That was like with a K. Darth Burn Knight. That was my that was my go to for everything, and hey, I use you, it religiously. Do you Sounds pretty awesome, right? Was that did you have that in like the PS3 era? Is that your PSN mm-hmm. ID? Hey, you yeah. better resurrect that account if you got PS4, someone... or PS5. <laughs> So, because someone might take it, you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, they can't take names. So, like, I used to be Kai One Five Seven, and they didn't let you change PSN names for a really long time. I know this is a tangent, and we were wrapping up, but <laughs> uh, for a really long time, uh, they didn't let you change your PSN name. And I remember being able to change it to Anton Six. I was so excited, like, but it, Kai One Five Seven and Anton Six are both completely taken. So, like, if you want to stick with that same handle on PlayStation, as long as you can get into that account, that okay. same account, like, if you were to get a PS Five today and log in, it'd be that same name, and nobody that's, would be able to take it. Now that's interesting. That's good to know. Okay, you just wow. 
All right. Because again, like I've never seen one even with a name close to that. Because like you, of course, the D, the B, and the K were always capitalized. So like, all right, yeah, noted. All, all right. right. Well, that's that's the show, guys. Until next time, uh, take it easy. Keep it cheesy. <laughs>